guys, Miss Bucko here for Basic Math with Miss Bucko. Today we're going to be talking about counting numbers in groups of 10 by 1s. So we're going to not only count groups of 10 by 1s, but we're also going to count what we have left over in the case that we have more than 10. So before we get started, as we're going to do every single day, we're going to start with our fluency activity. So Today I went around my house and I realized that I had a tin of popcorn. So I gathered 10 pieces of popcorn to help me to practice my fluency. Now once the video is done, if you'd like to practice the fluency activity again, you can gather something like popcorn or Cheerios or any really any kind of cereal that you can count out into a group of 10 because our practice is all going to be under a group of 10 today. So I also grabbed a paper plate because the paper plate is going to allow me to pull out the amount of popcorn that I need for my activity. So in our activity today, we are going to do a strategy called show one more on your finger. So can everybody show me one the math way on your finger? Yep, we're just going to put our pinky up just like this and that's going to represent one more. So we're going to start first with the number five. So if you already have your materials, you can count them out with me. If not, just count along. So I have one, two, three, four, five. Excellent. So now my job is to show one more on my fingers. So I'm going to put up one more on my fingers and now we're going to count them again. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one more than five is equal to six. Let's try another one. All right. So now I have a group of six pieces of popcorn and I need to add one more on my finger and then I'm gonna count all of it to see what one more than six is equal to. So let's try. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, good. So seven is one more than six. All right, let's try another one. All right. Now I have a group of three pieces of popcorn and I'm gonna show one more on my finger and let's see what one more than three is equal to. I have one, two, three, four. So one more than three is equal to four. Very good job. I'm just gonna put my popcorn away. Remember, you can practice this as many times as you want to. And the more that you practice, the more your brain's gonna just remember what one more than any number is. It's gonna become memorized in your brain. So we won't have to practice as much when we get back to school. So, to get us started today, I want us to warm up with an application problem. So I have my application problem right here. And we do application problems to start almost all of our math uh, lessons when we're at school. And the application problem is gonna help us to use some of the strategies that we already know. Sometimes it's gonna help us to use the strategies that we use in our fluency activity. And it's also going to be a nice jump start to get our brains ready to learn for the activity that we're doing today. So the first rule of um, doing an application problem is we always want to read it all the way through one time before we do anything else. So I'm going to read this. If you can see it in the camera, you can read along with me. So our problem says, Lisa counted some sticks into a pile of 10. She counted five other sticks into another pile. Draw a picture to show Lisa's sticks. Hmm. So now my next step isn't going to be to dive right in. I don't want to dive right in and miss important information. So I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to go, maybe, I'm going to go back through and I'm going to circle all of the important information that's going to help me to solve my problem. So remember, my problem says that I need to draw a picture to show Lisa's sticks. Okay. So when I come back up here, I see that Lisa, oh, I know that's important because that's whose sticks I'm drawing, counted some sticks. Mm. My friends at school know that when we see this word some, 
This is going to represent our mystery number. What am I trying to figure out? I'm trying to figure out how much is equal to some. So Lisa counted some sticks into a pile of 10. Oh, that's going to be an important number. She counted five other sticks into another pile. Oh, I see another important number. And now I have to draw. So the first thing that I'm going to draw is Lisa, because Lisa's who has the sticks, so that's going to be important. So I'm just going to do a quick math drawing of Lisa. Oh, here she is. Give her some nice curly hair. All right. The next thing that I want to make sure that I draw is the two numbers that I circled. They're the important facts for my story. So the first number is 10, and I know that she has 10 sticks. So one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm going to label this with the number ten and circle it so that I remember that this picture represents her ten sticks. Now, she also has a group of five. So, ooh, so I'm going to draw my five sticks on this side so that I have a clear second group. And I'm also going to label it here. Beautiful. Now, my friends also know that when we finish a problem, it doesn't end here. We need to write it in a sentence. So I'm going to write that Lisa, sorry, I'm going to turn my board a little bit. Lisa has 10 ones and 5 ones. so that everybody knows what I solved for. I know that Lisa has 10 ones and five ones. And as we get a little bit later into our lessons, we're gonna really dive into and figure out what this means. But for now, all I want you to do is tell me that you have 10 ones and how many more ones you have when we're solving a problem. So I'm gonna put this to the side for right now. And we're gonna pull our popcorn back out except this time I'm going to need to go back into my tin and grab a handful more. So you guys should all have about 20 pieces of popcorn if you're going to practice this at home. So now I have my popcorn and I have my plate for working on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a whole big pile. Oh nice big pile and put it on my plate. Now I need to count out what I have. I need to know how many pieces of popcorn do I have. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I'm going to stop there for just one second. Because I know I'm trying to figure out how many groups of 10 I have and then what I have left over. So I already have a group of 10. So I'm going to make sure these are nice and tight to the top so that I don't mix it up with any of my other pieces of popcorn. Now, let's see what we have left over. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, if I was going to write it saying I have blank ones and blank ones, what do you think I might say? I'm going to give you a second. Excellent! I'm going to write that I have 10 ones and 6 ones because I have a group of 10 up here and a group of 6 down here. Awesome job, guys! So. We're not always going to have items that we can count out like this. Sometimes we're going to see our problems on a piece of paper. And we're going to need to use the strategy of putting a check as we count. Because putting a check on everything as we count it is going to let us know when we have a group of 10. And it's also going to help us to make sure that we're counting all of our objects. As you can see, some of these piles are nice and neat. And some of them are kind of crazy. So putting the check again is going to make sure that we know that we counted that object and that we've counted all of our objects. 
So let's look at the first one together. I'm going to use blue for this one. All right. So right here, I have groups of circles. And again, it says count 10. Put a check as you count. And we're going to figure out how many ones and how many ones we have in each group. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, and since I know I have a group of ten, I'm going to ask you guys to do something really special. I'm going to ask you to put a box around that group of ten. Because I know for me, that helps my brain remember that that's a group of 10, so that when I go to write my sentence, I don't have to go back and recount all my numbers. So I have 10 here, 11, 12, 13. So I have 13 total. Hmm. Do I have 13 here? No. How much do I have here? I have one, two, three. Very good. So I have ten ones and how many ones? Good. I have three ones. So our answer says I have ten ones and three ones. All right, guys. So we're going to practice our next problem now. So our next problem is over here with our hearts. So again, I want to use my checks to make sure that I've counted all of my hearts and I don't leave any of them out. So let's get started. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, and I need to stop right there because when I get a group of ten, what do I need to do? That's right, I need to circle it, because that's gonna remind me that I've already counted 10 ones. I'm gonna put my 10 on the line because I have 10 ones. Now, I can't stop counting there because not all of my hearts have checks on them. So let's keep going. One, two. Oh, all right, so how many ones do we have left over? Right, we have two ones. So I have 10 ones and two ones. Very good. Now I'm going to switch my marker color so that we can see our checks really clearly down here. And now we're going to do our boxes. So again, let's count until we get to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Very good. So now, remember, when we get to 10, what do we need to do? That's right, we need to draw a box around it because that's going to remind us that we have a group of 10. I also need to put it down into my sentence so that I know I have 10 ones. Now, got to keep going. I still have more left. I have one, two, three. Very good. So I have 10 ones and three ones. Very good. Let's do one more. Now this one looks super wacky. It's in a circle. It's kind of crazy. So this is where it's going to be really important that we check all of our pictures so that we don't miss any and that we box our picture as well once we get to 10. So let's get started. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I'm going to do this guy in the middle, ten. Excellent. So I'm going to box it up, do, do, do. and I'm going to write a ten on the line because I have ten ones. Now, I have one left over, so I'm going to put a check in that box, and I'm also going to write a one down here because I have ten ones and one ones. Very good. So you guys did an excellent, excellent job with that. And I'm going to give you time to practice all that hard work at home. Now, each of you is going to get one of these worksheets um, through our Facebook um, video. 
I'm going to take a picture of it. You're going to get the front of it. You're going to get the back of it. And all you need to do is tell me how many ones and how many ones. Now, it might be a little tricky because you won't be able to do the checks and you won't be able to circle the groups of 10. So something that I recommend is having an adult count out the total number and giving you that much in either popcorn, like we did for our fluency activity, or spoons, or forks, or straws, or cereal, whatever you have at the house, have an adult count out that many and you can divide it up on a paper plate, you can divide it up on the table, and then you'll have your answer of blank ones and blank ones. Remember, you're looking for a 10 to be in the first group of ones. So I look forward to hearing all of your wonderful answers, and I will see you next time on Basic Math with Ms. Bucko. Bye guys.